I might, if you're good with it, like, can I ask you, how did Steph handle Christian's trade? Like, can we have some fun with up the top? <laughs> Actually, I just talked to him before I did the podcast and, and I was like telling him who you all are. And, and he was like, oh, wow, he's at the bay now. Yeah. And then, and then we went on and talked about Disney. So sorry. We didn't okay, really talk about great. That's, <laughs> that's good. Cool. Perfect. Good perfect. But I'll have to tell you. you, I should have put my jersey on because he was my favorite player before I left Charlotte. And I have his jersey. I love it. And so oh, I have to tell you, you, I just have a slight crush on, on your husband in a great way. <laughs> Like she is. <laughs> oh, so, okay, I was going to offer up a jersey. Would you rather Ed's jersey or Christian's jersey? Whichever you can take. Christian. Okay. Christian. I'll send. Yeah. Okay, I'll send you one of one of his new ones. His new jersey, twenty three. Yeah. There you go. As long as I, can I have one, of, can I have one of your kids? Any of Absolutely. them? Absolutely. You can have all three of them. Maybe. Yes. Nothing would make me happier. Okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm, my my life goal, my this daily goal. Great podcast. I think um, we can yeah. just end it right here. Yeah. Welcome to your mom. Your mom podcast. Your mom's podcast. This isn't any podcast. This is your mother's podcast. My mom's podcast. Nah, dude, she's your mom. With Ashley Allison and Lisa McCaffrey. Your mom is a podcast. Shut up, dude. Whoo, we have a dandy for you today. Welcome to your mom. I'm Ashley Adamson, a sports broadcaster for the Pac-12 about four months ago. I uh, started this podcast with Lisa McCaffrey so that I could crowdsource parenting advice <laughs> as I try to raise my five and three-year-old here in San Francisco. It has gone well so far. My kids are still alive, yep. so that's good. Driving. Lisa, yes. four sons who all play or coach football, most notably Christian McCaffrey, the newest Bay Area obsession who just joined oh, the yeah. 49ers and I think has has fit it has fit in nicely so far. He's happy. seems to be doing okay. He is very, very, very happy, and that's all I care about. So good. That's all you care about. Yep. Good. Well, when you're throwing and running and catching touchdowns, that, that's a lot of joy that is derived from that. Uh well, no matter how you found us, glad you're here. Um, I just want to say too, thanks for the kind words and support. The people are listening to the podcast. We didn't know if anyone was gonna listen when we yeah, started this. We thing, just but we're gonna talk. <laughs> we were just going to talk and record it and see what happened. And, and it turns out uh, there is room for the four millionth and one podcast yeah, on exactly. <laughs> parenting and mom. Uh, oh, yeah. But like I said, you guys are in for a treat today. So yeah. I don't want to belabor the point, but our guest is a woman who is an author, educator, the founder of a Christian Montessori school. She was a big time athlete in her own right. She has raised three incredible kids, including one of the best and most famous basketball players on the planet. And yes, we're talking about Sonia Curry. She recently wrote a book about what it was like raising two NBA sons, Stephen, Stefan and Seth, and her daughter, Sidel, who played volleyball in college. Um, the book is called Fierce Love. And Lisa, you said it. It's it's perfectly titled. Yes. It's it's a great read. For any parent out there, it's a great read. You can pull some of her 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 parenting style and adapt it to your own because it's a really, really I wish I had read it when I was raising my kids. How about we say that? But it's a great read. It's really fun. You know, it occurred to me while I was reading her book that there are a lot of parallels, Lisa, with your and Sonia's past. So you're both big time college athletes in your own right. You both married professional athletes and went on to raise kids who became superstar athletes. Your most famous sons are now playing professionally in the Bay Area. Christian, obviously, is we know with the Niners and stuff with the Warriors and I know that Steph is a huge Panthers fan since he grew up in Charlotte, so I'm not sure how he handled the trade news, but I guess we can just ask his mom. So let's bring in the one and only, absolutely delighted to have Sonia Curry with us on Your Mom. Thanks for being here. We appreciate you, Sonia. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited about this. <laughs> I, well, I guess I was going to ask how Steph handled the trade, but how did you handle the trade? Because now that I know, I understand that Christian McCaffrey was one of your favorite football players. Well, now that I'm not in Charlotte anymore, okay. I'm happy. Because okay. now I, when I go to the Bay, right. I can go to the games there. So I'm I'm, after, I'm okay with it. I mean, okay, I'm good. Always, Yay. Yeah. Let me call his agent and make him sign now the paper. <laughs> we are waiting for that. Now we're good. Okay, good. Yeah. Yes, yes. I mean, I do have some empathy um, from the fact of whenever you just have to move, it's a lot. But, oh my gosh, yeah. you know, the Bay is a great place to be. And yeah. come on, let's bring another championship to the Bay. Let's the Warriors, the Warriors yeah. we, we want more. We want let's more. do both. How fun would that be? Oh yeah. my gosh. Let's put it, let's manifest it. 
or yes. you're, or you're right there. Just, you know, this podcast is notorious for manifesting something and it happening. I'm not kidding. Okay. So, we're we're yep, two for two, our last two podcasts. So yes. we manifested okay. Christian to the Niners. And yep. then, and then Lisa said, I, I need to manifest some wins, some big wins. And then, you know, boom, last boom. week Christian showed up. So yeah. So, so whatever you want to manifest, you let us know. Yeah. I'm with <laughs> Uh, well, so I'm excited to talk about your book and we're going to dive into yes. that. And uh, there's so many great stories. And we, Lisa and I were both just, I mean, we've been talking about it the last few days, all the different incredible things that you talk about in the book, but I want to start sort of big picture with you, like an update on how things are going. You release a book six mm -hmm. months ago in which you talk about some big life transitions and sort of finding your new purpose. How would you describe this current phase of life that you're in right now? And, and where are you? Well, I am actually in Florida and, you know, this phase of my life is really just establishing my foundation and wow, I don't know why that's like getting me a little emotional here, but just my foundation again and establishing a home again, you know, it's been, shoot, 40 years um, and first time on my own and you know, you think you can do all this stuff on your own because you don't really have to. But then when you do, you know, it, it, it was it was a big transition. But, you know, it's a beautiful thing as well. You know, it's a great opportunity to just reconnect with me and who I am and um, do something different, do something new. So I'm trying to just embrace all the challenges that come with it. Um, and just turn it all into something really, really good and beautiful. Yeah. And I, I know you that. will after reading your book, my gosh, that was, it was so inspirational. You, first off, you're an amazing mom and a, amazing person. I look back where you came from, literally a trailer. You were living yes. in a trailer to mm -hmm. look where you are now. And I just, and you had kept God in your life the whole time. Yes. Uh, first and foremost, and you raise your kids that way. It's so inspirational. And you, if you have not read this book, Fierce Love, it is every mom should read this book. It is so good. Even if you, if I had half your strength, I would have raised, <laughs> my kids would have been basketball players. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it's so inspirational. It's so wonderful. And it just, it was, it, oh, I like it teared up and I love the phase. I'm in the sort of the same phase that you're in now in that I'm, you know, I, I always define myself as being a mom and now I'm not a mom anymore. I'm trying to regain myself. And I remember a lot in the book, you talk about, you cherish the quiet times. And at the end you went to the spa and I can totally relate to that. And you're just trying to connect with yourself and mm -hmm. it's amazing. So you're, it's, it's great. You're doing that. And I know you're going to, something great's going to come out of it. As what's been the best part for you in this new phase? Cause you mentioned the challenges, but what's, what's been the beauty in it? Well, honestly, just kind of surface wise is I get to just do whatever I want to do. <laughs> and really not even Sounds like amazing. I had a friend of mine say, I was just telling her all the stuff I was doing and just when I was doing it and just waking up and doing this. And she was like, wow, so you're just actually just doing whatever the heck you want to do. And I'm, at first I wanted to correct her like, no, no. And I was like, you are right. Like I wake up when I want to wake up. I go to bed when I want to go to bed and it's watch whatever shows <laughs> what I on anyone else. And so, you know, it's, you know, buy what I want to buy. And it's just like, it's, that's kind of been really fun, but I didn't even realize it in, in the process of it. I didn't realize it, but that's been the freedom. I think yeah. just the freedom to just be me and find out who me is. So what have you discovered then yeah. as you've, have you've continued? Cause I think that's the one thing is that as when I was younger and a lot of people, I think you feel like, you know, who you are, right? I mean, early on in my twenties, I felt like I'd kind of figured myself out. I was an adult mm -hmm. and then you get to your thirties and you realize oh, I had no idea what I was doing in my twenties. And now I'm just entering my forties and I'm a much different person even than I was 10 years ago. So what have you sort of discovered? I think I've discovered the truth. Oh, no, I won't say the truth. I think I've just confirmed for myself how strong I actually am. And, you know, people would say that and then, you know, but, you know, they didn't really see the back parts of raising the kids and doing all that. But in the midst of having to just do this on my own, I am strong. Like, I didn't really believe it. I just was being mom. 
as you can relate to. Yeah, but get up every day and you're just like, how do you do what you do? I don't know. I just don't think. Well, about okay, it. <laughs> look at your life. You went back to school with two kids. You moved your kids back to Virginia Tech and finished your degree. Yes. Pat yourself on the back for that. And then you have three kids and you started as Montessori school. Yeah. And like Norman, like, okay, can you give yourself a, some, a little credit there? <laughs> you are strong. Just reading the book, Fierce Love, Perfect Name. You are one of the strongest women I've read about. It's pretty amazing. And you raised three great kids. So give yourself credit. You are strong. So I'm so excited for the next chapter to watch what you do. And I think with that strength was just really, was I just crazy, you know, just <laughs> crazy and just doing this stuff versus, you know, being very intentional. I'm a very intentional person. Yep. And, and I'm also learning that I'm also just a very like fun person. Mm -hmm. Like just put me in a room with some people going to make me laugh and, I like people around me that we're just going to just enjoy each other and have fun. And, and I miss that part of me. Like, yeah. good. You know, and so I'm getting, I'm, I like her. Like oh. I'm really learning to just really like myself. <laughs> That's good. It's That's awesome. beautiful. Honestly, yeah. it's awesome. And I think there's a ton of women who are listening who can probably relate to exactly all these different phases that you go through. I, let's talk about your book. And, and Lisa said it like fierce love it's the perfect title, um, A Memoir of Family, Faith, and Purpose. And if you haven't read it, just don't waste any more time. As soon as you're done listening to this podcast, go buy it because it's fantastic. When did you decide to write it, Sonia? What, why and when? Well, I it actually started like when Stefan first kind of came on the scene at Davidson and people would just stop us all the time and just compliment us on him off the court, on the court, just just who he was, you know, how well-rounded he was as a person. And then Seth comes along and then my daughter, and we'd often get stopped in Charlotte a lot and say, how do you do it? How are you, know, oh my gosh, you should write a book. And I would laugh it off. Like, right, I'm just a mom. Like, it's no big deal. Like, yeah, I've done my job and I'm happy about that, but everybody's doing their job. So I'm no different or special than anyone else. And, and my children's careers and paths are just theirs. And so whether you're a basketball player, lawyer, doctor, manager in, in a grocery store, it doesn't matter as long as you are successful and joyful and happy is what I think that all parents strive for with their children. And so yeah, I've laughed it off. And then I just kept hearing it more and more. And then probably about eight, between eight to eight years ago, inside here, I just kept getting this, you need to write this book. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh gosh, what is, what is this? Cause I don't like to write. Um, I actually have a fear of writing. Um, <laughs> and so was, we wouldn't go away. And then after uh, the kids went to college, I was like, all right, well maybe I'll write a book about raising them since everybody wants to know and how God's hand was in all their choices of getting to college, hearing God's voice. And all the time, not realizing that I was hearing God's voice in me to write this book, I was hearing the voice of the world telling me they wanted to know about it. Mm -hmm. And so then three years ago, right before COVID hit, things just started happening. One, I was like, I'm right, ready to write this book, but I need... Um, uh, manager because I don't know how to go about it. And then my daughter-in-law works at CAA was like, oh, let me introduce you to uh, a book uh, agent. Loved him immediately. And then he was like, all right, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to get you a list of ghostwriters. Bam. I had 11 to choose from, chose one. He was perfect. Nice thing I know. Okay, we're going to send it out um, and had nine offers for the book. Wow. wow. And things were just happening like this. And I didn't even have a clue how to write a book or whatever this wow. process was. So next thing I know, we're, we're writing it. And then it took about two years to kind of pull it all together. And and then they set the release date and everything just was on track. Never delay. Nothing. Everything wow. just happened. And so it was just God saying me. This following the voice of God mm -hmm. and God lining it all up for it to happen. 
He said, you just take that first step and the dominoes will all fall oh, into they place. Do. The doors and they open do. and we yeah. have to walk through them. Yes. Did you learn anything? I, I'm a big believer in that things don't become real sometimes until you write them down. Yes. Going through the process of figuring out what you wanted to put in. I'm sure there was plenty of stuff that didn't make it in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to share any of those stories, go ahead. But <laughs> no, did, did you, what was, what did you learn through the process of writing it? Now, a not so positive thing that I learned about myself and the counter of being a strong person was how much of a pleaser I was. Mm. Because then I had to really wrestle sometimes with telling the truth, helping people with the truth, being vulnerable with the truth, but then also possibly hurting other people's feelings and, yeah. and, and really wrestling with gaining success or attention on the backs of somebody else's struggles or challenges, even though it involved me and my kids right. in certain situations. So learning how scared I was of what other people were going to say by me being very vulnerable and wanting to tell stories. And then to just how much of a pleaser, I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings, mm -hmm. but needed to tell the truth, the truth right. um, for it to be real and for it to, for God to be able to use it the way that he wanted to. So I'm very much, didn't think I was a pleaser at all. Huh. I don't didn't, feel reading it that you threw anybody under the bus at all. That That was not. You know, I mean, I think you did a great job of telling your story in every situation. Um, well, thank you. Thank and I don't look at you as a pleaser because you were strict. You were very strict. You were no dating till 16 and you held held fast. So right. we had a lot of rules, but we caved on some of them. So that was <laughs> impressive. I'm impressed. <laughs> so, yeah, good job on that. Um, yeah. yeah. Do your kids ever come back and say, wow, mom, you were too strict or, you know, do they have any saying? Are they raising the kids, their kids the same way at all? Their rate, it's really interesting watching it because they are using some of the things, but some of them they've changed uh, and so, or haven't adopted. And so it's nice watching it because even when I wrote the book and I would go back, which the book itself ended up being after going through my personal situation, it just happened, it ended up really being a very healing process for me because I got an opportunity to look back on those beautiful years that we had with, you know, the family as, as we were and raising the kids and doing all that. It was really beautiful. So it was kind of edifying that all, even though we are where we are right now, all those other years, 30 plus years was not for naught. It was mm -hmm. It, right. They were per they were perfect for that time and that season of what and how we were as a family. And so they, that was beautiful for me to be able to do that. But I did wrestle with um, was I too strict sometimes and, and did I have to really be that crazy and, <laughs> and all. <laughs> but you know what? You do what you only you do what you can do. You do what you know what to do. Um, right. And you you just keep moving. Um, and so, yeah, they do say that yeah. sometimes I was a little too strict, but they actually appreciate it now as adults. And now that they have their children, they appreciate it. That's yeah. good. Yes. I, I remember you, one of the things in the book that struck me as relevant is when you said the drive time, when you would drive from Charlotte to like Norman, yeah. be a 45 minute drive. And those were some of the best moments. And I started thinking my own situation too. I just remember I'd have all four in a, in the car and we'd drive to games and gyms and whatnot. And looking back, we'd all, we'd play music. We'd all try to, we'd all sing and make fun yeah. of each other and laugh. And, and then it was also emotional after a game sometimes too, if a, one of the one didn't do well, or they you know fouled out or whatever the case, it was always a time to like talk and, um, you know, review what had just happened and sort of bond. Those were the strongest bonding moments looking back. And yeah. like you said, sometimes they were only 45 minutes or 30 minutes and we were all together in one car compact and, you know, without the rest of the world there. Yes. It, was, it was beautiful. It was a yeah. beautiful moment in time for looking back. So I appreciated that. that it's like those precious moments, right? As a parent, yeah. you, you get them and they're fleeting, but it's why it's so important and why it's helpful to read books like this. Cause you just, right. you appreciate it more. Cause you just have, you have to, right. Cause that's all it is. It's these moments that we get. I, you said something, Sonia, that I'm, I'm curious about that the book sort of came out and you'd finished it and it was being released right as you're going from what I understand is right when, when you and Dell are splitting up, mm -hmm. did you, 
think about including any of that? Or was did you wrestle with how much you wanted to include about your guys' story and journey as as a couple? No, I really didn't. Like in the process, even with the publisher and them editing, you know, they wanted to put add some of that, and, you mm -hmm. know, that the, uh, the sale value and, you know, would increase sure. and all of that. And I was just like, the Lord wasn't, it was intended to talk about raising my children mm -hmm. to that point. Now, whether a book comes after this about all that <laughs> um, and, and not necessarily about the breakup, but, you know, if it was about that. And I, I mean, Dell was right there in all of it and, mm -hmm. you know, wanted to give him credit for that. And he would say, you know, I let her take care of the home. I let her take care of the kids. And so, you know, that was the beautiful thing. It was like, you know, unfortunately, things happened, you know, in, in my personal life uh, and in, in my marriage at the same time. And I wrestled with God with that. I was like, what in the world, even though, you know, the decision was made and God's like, what my fault, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, it was just like, but it was the season. So again, I just, am just waiting and waiting to see how God just pulls all this together um, and creates a different type of opportunity and blessing to then be a blessing to other people, because that's truly what I believe we're all here for is to live our lives to be blessing for other people and use our experiences. And we have to be strong enough to share them. Yeah. And, not worry yeah. About them. and so that this was, a I grew up a whole lot in these last three years. Mm. Wow. wow. That's amazing. That's amazing perspective. And what a beautiful lens. If, if we all could like look at life through that lens, the world would be a, a much happier, more joyful place. There's no doubt about it. What's What's been the thing you've gotten asked the most about in the book? The reaction? Wow. Wow, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I get, I think I get asked a lot about like, like how hard was it to really, when I would set a limit or an expectation at home to really, really, really follow through with it. And um like with Stefan and not going with this girl, not dating till they're 16 and right. not going with this girl. And then, you know, with Sadell and having her temperature tantrum in her room and taking <laughs> everything out of her room and all of that. And I love that. You're just like, yeah. you, you really, really did, did that. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I didn't even make, I, you can't make that stuff up. Right. Um, and the super glue, the super and the glue. Super glue and I was like, you know, and I can only tell that story now, but, you know, I wouldn't be afraid of DSS if this yeah. book would have came out. <laughs> I almost called social services. <laughs> then I'm like, oh. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, and they're like, so, so, you know, they, and then they saw the strength in that. And I'm like, but what you didn't really, but hopefully it came through in the book was, you know, even like with Sadell saying, you know, you're the worst mother in the world and me going, well, go upstairs and you can Move. figure out if you want to live somewhere else. And how, I mean, like, just deathly scared I was and afraid that she was actually going to choose to make that decision. And I'm like, oh, gosh, if she comes down here. So, you know, and all that and setting the limits and all that stuff and sounding all, OK, mom, and I'm strict was a whole lot of fear behind them. right that they, yeah, would, they, they saw they, you vulnerable they yeah. could see you and if they read did they read the book or did they read it yeah did and they, they actually what people and I've shared it several times is they actually picked the stories they wanted me to tell wow. so what before I wrote wrote the book I asked them to give me at least five things they remember about you know their childhood and about you know me raising them and so the stories that are in there they picked so wow that's cool because i was gonna say did you have to get approval but no yeah. they gave it to you right that's so neat. whose whose choice was it to do the one where um the two boys were competing and they pulled the chair out from the other one and they got suspended <laughs> well, that, was that's actually, cool. that was actually stefan's okay Steph Seth claims to not remember anything that I, any of the details of the situations. He says he doesn't remember a thing. But he was at fault. That's mm -hmm. it, and no, he didn't. He never did anything wrong. And I right. was always right. crazy. Yeah. And, but, you know, but that's that middle child, you know, they, you know. 
Right. Birth, birth order is a real thing. And I know you yeah. said that in your book, but I, I believe that fully yeah. as, as one of four and, you know, you guys have all have multiple children. It's, it is, it is, it definitely impacts how you view the world. I, I got to tell you, Sonia, I read your book this summer, um, the bulk of it when I was on a plane to the East coast and the timing of when I read it will stick with me for forever because on, I was on the plane and it was the clinching. It was game six of the NBA finals, Warriors and Celtics. So I've got Steph on the screen and I don't have my headphones. So I'm like sort of watching it. Um, but I'm also reading your book at the same time. And the chapter that I started, and it was right after they won, he had been named MVP. There's like this joyous celebration, just larger than life smile. And I get to the chapter where you talk about that Steph Curry almost didn't exist. And that day in Richmond, Virginia, sit in the car with Dell. For people who haven't heard the story, can you? Can you just share a little bit? Because it was the most poignant thing that I'm sitting here reading this and I'm looking at stuff on, and I was like in tears uh, as I was having that experience of reading the book. What was it like to share that part? You know, it was, it was, it was healing to, to tell the story in the book um, because I know there's lots of people out there men and women i know it really comes down to the the woman's body and all that but there are men out there that are trying to be partners in making these kind of decisions and there's there's partners men out there who don't even get a say in that because it just happens and they don't ever know about it or not um but the simple fact that people are having to make this decision every single day, every second of the day out there that we'll never know about. For me to be able to share that story with people to know, one, so many people are struggling with it and it's okay. You know, it's okay that you are struggling with it. Um, the second is that, you know, I, the decision that I made to keep him at that point is also countered with the decision that I made to not carry through with a previous pregnancy. And so God just bringing it all together and just showing me being able to just say, hey, here's this decision I made in this point and look at the blessing that he has become. And I just thank God for that. And I just say to God that it was meant to be and to not carry judgment. You don't have to carry a lot of judgment forever. You know, give ourselves some grace in making the decision with what we had to make the decision with when we made it. Mm -hmm. um, but all things, my favorite scriptures, all things get work together for the good of those called according to his purposes in Christ Jesus. And so it all worked out and there's Stefan and, yeah. um, and look what he's doing. And it's just amazing. It's just amazing to me. And, and look at what he's doing. I think the thing, when I look at, sorry, I'm okay. sorry. No, no, and I appreciate you sharing that with us, honestly. And I really, really appreciated and respected and love that you were vulnerable to write that in the yeah. book, because I think, especially in the time that we're in, it is so poignant and so important because people probably look at you, Sonia, and think she's got it all. She's per just this perfect, wonderful, like, and even now, and with all the things that have happened, I'm sure that in, in reading the book, people understand a completely different side of, of your life and, and decisions and things that you've gone through. Um, had, had you told Steph that story before? I mean, obviously I'm sure the book wasn't the first time you read it, but had you talked to him about, about that before? Oh, absolutely. Yes. We had, we agreed that along the way, any things that had happened in our lives at a certain point that we felt developmentally that they were able to receive it in a, in a good way to help them as they developed and grew as, as like teenagers and then young adults, then we would share it with them. And I shared in the book, the time where I spoke in front of the church and Sadell was there and how important it felt more so for me to, for her to hear it, um, because she, she, she's going to struggle with those things. You know, if she doesn't make, you know, good decisions, 
uh, she could be dealing with that. And what I didn't want is for her to feel like that would be something she couldn't come to me about or whatever. And just to show her that I was a human being, because I think that we hide so much from our children and they look at us and think, you know, well, mom, you, you don't understand when you can never do it. They still will do some of that anyway, <laughs> but, um, you know, just thinking about my daughter again, being intentional. I always wanted to parent them in a very intentional way to equip them for when they weren't with me that they could like, remember, you know, Oh, okay. Well, mom shared this with me or, you know, and, and to also understand how real, how vulnerable they're going to be in situations and they're not going to be perfect. Um, and, um, you know, somebody asked me in that decision, you know, if you knew what you knew now, would you have made the decision about having the first ab abortion? And I said, that's such a hard question to ask because I didn't have the faith that I had, I had now then, if I would have had the faith that I had now, then probably not. Right. But that's always one of those things where you're like, if I knew what I knew then, then I'd make a decision. <laughs> right, right. That's Time good. It's 2020. Yeah. So that's why that's these so books good. are good. Yeah. yeah that's yeah, why these good. books, yeah. And yeah. Sharing exactly. our experiences are important because yeah. then we can be that for other people. Right. Wow. Amen. Amen. And, and I think, again, just to go back to what, Steph is doing right now. And, and all three of your children are amazing. I want to talk about your daughter too, because I think sometimes she might get lost in the, in the, um, you know, with the two NBA sons and everything that they've done. I, I want to hear more about your daughter, but just real quick to put the bow on, on what Steph has become like, yes, he's the superstar for NBA titles in eight years. I mean, what he has done, the best three point shooter in the history of the game, all these things. But when I think about Steph Curry, I think about all the stuff away from basketball. And there are all of these, you know, we talk about athletes as role models and there are all of these, you know, role models that we see where they give money to certain causes or they support certain things. And that's great. But like Steph walks the walk in a way that I've never seen truly Sonia in my, in my entire professional life covering athletes and, and what he does for girls and for women, him going back to finish his degree, which I'm sure made you very proud. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when you, which I love, that was that was incredible. Can when I you have you call at, my son? Yeah, exactly. Please. We need to get you on the phone with Christian. Yes, um, but good. when you look at what Steph has done away from basketball, like, is there one thing that you feel the most proud of him, or that you just hold in your heart with such joy that that he's become the person that he's become? I Again, off the court, like I see him with his wife and that fills my heart like no other. Like he is such a champion for her. Um, he so supportive. He is very empathetic to everyone in his life. Um, almost to a detriment sometimes, like he has to learn to balance that. I love seeing what they're doing with eat, learn, play and how they're, you know, blessing so many families, how family is so important to him. And then the biggest compliment that I get from other people is that when you meet him and you talk to him, it is like no one else is in the room, in the space. And that's how he makes all of us feel. Yeah. He pays attention. And for as much stuff as going on around him, he's a little, he's a little um, attention deficit too. Uh, <laughs> and busy. He always just focuses in on you, asks you questions, and he listens when you respond. Yeah. I don't do that. I'll ask you a name. <laughs> 30 seconds later, I'm like, what was your name again? Like, it's almost like, get me through this instant count. Yeah. He really makes present, people yeah. feel seen. He's present. And that I am so proud mm -hmm. of. I am so proud because that, those things, yes, he's full of empathy. He's just present. And that 
really is what has made him successful on the court with his teammates um, and with any endeavor that he does and he, with, you know, being a champion for women and women's rights and uh, equality because he has such empathy for everyone. If he sees it, a deficit somewhere or he'll, he'll do what he can do. And so um, I know that was a long no. Oh, I answer. love it. No. But it reminds me of a little thing you did. Clay Thompson was getting criticism and you oh. put out the most beautiful Instagram post to honor him and make him, you know, feel good about himself. It was just, that was beautiful. That was great. And so you wonder where, where he gets it. <laughs> Let's see. Did you hear from Clay? I assume he, he I assume did. That he meant, he uh, texted me was back um, and was thanking me for it. But yeah. I did that. My mother's heart just came out and I was like, dude. A little bit of it was a little hard, but I wanted to be soft. It was just like, dude, you don't no, have to everybody it was else. Focus. No, that was awesome. Yeah. No, it, it's awesome. And I, I remember I was at the Elite Eight um, at the Chase Center this past March. And I, I look down and I see, I'm like, oh, my God, that's Steph Curry. And he's there with his three little ones. Mm. and just taking in basketball it was when he was injured. So he wasn't playing, but he's just taking in basketball, being a fan and being a dad. And I'm sitting there going, and there's not, it's just him and the three kids. Like Aisha wasn't there. Who's the, young, who's, um, who's the youngest? Remind me. Cannon. 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 He's yeah. pouring popcorn all over himself. <laughs> His two sisters are dying laughing. Like they're just playing together and he's smiling. And it is just this, it's a dad with his kids at a game and Meanwhile, I'm like, God, you're the biggest, one of the biggest superstars on the planet. And it was just such a cool moment. And he's so real. And there's a million different stories like that, that we could tell, but I just, it is a credit and a testament certainly, um, to you. And obviously he deserves a lot of credit too, but I love what you said about the way that he treats Aisha. I think that as a, as a mom, that's one of the things that you want for your son the most yeah. is that they understand yeah. how to, how to treat women and how to be a partner. Um, yeah. I have like 8,000 things that that I still want to ask you. And I know that we're uh, running out of time here because you've got a hot date at Disney World. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got a hot date with Snicky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but there are a few things that I want to make sure we get in. So one of the things that I loved in your book that I think will resonate with so many people who listen to this podcast is this empty nest, you know, the empty nest phase of life. And you talked about that you defined yourself as a mother and that it was sort of your essence. And so there's a few different points that you talk about in the book. One was um, Steph's decision to leave Davidson after his junior year and declare for the NBA and how hard that was. And after the press conference, when he declared that you like went to a movie by yourself. You went to like, August Rush, like I the did. Yeah. movie to see. I remember that. that, that <laughs> and and you're just, but like the image of you sitting in a movie theater, having a moment, <laughs> like feeling this total loss. Mm -hmm. And then you realizing like, I need to just, show them love and support and I need to let go. And I think that's something that every parent feels, whether they're going to go to the NBA or whether they're just going to leave the house. Like it's this empty nest phase. When your daughter left, you talk about it being like a midlife crisis and the sadness you felt oh, yes. by her room. So I just, what, you know, wh how did you get through that? And for parents who are going through that phase for the first time, what advice would you offer? Again, I'd often tell them to give themselves grace to sit in those feelings because a lot of times we just shove them down um, and they can lead to making some other not so good decisions. I mean, you hear about people going through midlife crisis and all those kinds of things, but I really think like we don't give ourselves that opportunity to feel it and then go, it's, uh, it's okay. And let it pass. We fill it with other things. We, you know, just kind of move on, move on. And we really don't get a chance to just celebrate it. And so I would say, you know, embrace it, feel it, celebrate it, and then, then get in touch with what's next because it, there's something else coming. And that's what I did with going on the retreat was just what's next, Lord. Like I need to check in with you. Um, I need some direction. Because you do. I mean, I really thought I, I when Sadell left, I went to my doctor, did my physical. And long story short, he was as I was explaining to him what was going on with me, he was like, You're like going through some depression. And I was like, oh, what? Me? Nah, that's not no. And he was exactly right because wow. it was a crucial um step in just phase in my life ending. And so um 
you, yeah, you just got to find some new direction and um, focus on that. What's next? Lisa, you know that feeling. Yes. Yes, yeah. definitely. That, thus, that's why I'm sitting here doing a podcast. <laughs> 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 Trying to yeah. find myself. <laughs> it's a new purpose. No, yeah, I, no, I think it's real. I can, everything you said, I can 100% relate to. Yeah. And then you start trying to fill it with dumb things and you realize this is so vapid. I need something real. And I love that you went on that retreat and you could just sit and listen to yourself. And you, you went on a hike for the first time, which yeah. I thought was so powerful. Because that's a lot of times I'll just step out of the house and just walk. We have the woods nearby and I just, that's some of my favorite times, favorite moments. And yeah. I cherish that. And that's when I feel like closest to myself and, you know, I can analyze what's going on in my world. And I don't know, I just, I love that. So yeah, that's a great assessment of what empty nesting is. Yes. <laughs> well, and, and I'm reflecting on how both of you, and, and I mentioned at the top, but how both of you guys have had similar, some parallel paths. And maybe the biggest that we don't talk about enough is that you were both big time college athletes. So Lisa played soccer at Stanford, which is where she met Ed. Yep. Long-time soccer player. We played with uh, the rock. With the rock. Sonia, you played volleyball at Virginia Tech, which is where you met Dell. And then you both raised these superstar athletes. I, so Sonia, I'll start with you. I'm curious, like, did it or does it ever bother you when Steph and Seth are always talked about as the sons of NBA great Dell Curry, when like, obviously your genetics and parenting <laughs> played a, a huge role in, in who they became? Does it ever get under your skin? You know, it, 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 in the very beginning, it kind of did. And that was just the competitiveness in me. I was like, Hey, you know, <laughs> yeah. but then at the no end fun. of the day, I'm like, you know what? Not really. Because yeah. even the boy, even the boys would say they got a certain thing from me, like the tenacity and all that stuff from me and the fire. Um, and so they would say that. And as long as they know where it came from, I don't care what anybody else. Is. <laughs> there you go. Good there answer. you go. Yeah. Lisa, how so, about you? Is yeah, I would do? second that. Exactly. As long as the boys know where it's coming from. That's all I care <laughs> exactly. about. Exactly. <laughs> no, but I look back, I'm like, I laugh. I'm like, I, I got way more credit for being a good athlete. I actually feel than I really was like, <laughs> I just feel like I've become like a, this amazing soccer player every, with every touchdown Christian has scored. I'm better and better and better. I like, I laugh with my soccer friends. I'm like, wow, evidently I won a gold medal and did all these things. Like, <laughs> yeah. I didn't do any of those. And I'm not spreading those rumors for the record, but I yeah, am. I'm, yeah. You Look, are. I'm not correcting them. Not yeah, either, well, thank right? you guys. Thank you. I appreciate it. It makes me feel. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, I love that. Okay, Sonia, we're going to do something a little bit different at the end here, which we haven't done, but maybe a new segment on your mom, because um, we only have a couple more minutes. So we're going to do okay. rapid fire, like five or six oh, questions. Okay. okay, let's do it. All right. So number one, uh, after Steph, who is your favorite player on the Golden State Warriors? Clay. Steph has won four NBA titles in eight years. As his mom, which of those championship runs did you enjoy the most? The very first one. Hmm. Why is that? It was the first one, and it was kind of like the breaking of the ceiling. Like, yeah. what's next? I love that. What and it was in Cleveland, so <laughs> that made it. <laughs> Even but you're not competitive. You're not competitive. Yeah, they're all sweet. <laughs> they're all sweet. Uh, favorite dish that Aisha Curry makes? Oh my goodness, it's a hard one, probably. Oh god, yes. Um, I would say she makes uh, the Jama her mama's yeah. Jamaican chicken. Um, uh, sweet chicken something. Yeah. Sweet chicken Ow. something. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Southern yeah. Jerk, sweet, jerk sweet chicken, chicken something. Jamaican yes. Chicken. I love it. I love it. Okay. Favorite non basketball memory with Steph? Um, oh my gosh. It's a hard one. Lisa? Yeah. Um, can, it's okay. This dude is almost 40 years old. I can't remember. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That well, is I'll say after thing. tonight, it'll probably be this. And, there uh, we go. Okay, perfect. We won't make you late for that then. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then and then the last thing, we mentioned your daughter. And again, I, I think, I can't imagine what it would be like growing up with two older brothers that were Steph and, and Seth Curry. Uh, tell me your favorite thing about your daughter. Her strength. 
Like she just went through, you know, the IV process, uh, IV, IVF process and had her first child oh. and just watching her go through that. And then his birth and I got to be in the room. Oh. That girl is rock freaking solid. Wow. And um, I I was just amazed afterwards. I was like, babe, you are the excuse my language, S-H-I-T, because she <laughs> rocked all of that. I think but I know where she got that. <laughs> I, I was just going to say, and that comes from a long lineage, from what I understand of yes. Brandy Adams. Brandy come, Candy, a, yes. Some good stock. Yes. Some good stock in that yeah. family of women. Strong women. Oh, uh, okay. Women. If you could do anything different, would you would you go back and do anything differently, Sonia? With the kids? The kids, As yeah. a mom, yeah. As a mom. Yeah. You know what? No, I don't think so. I think it's all worked out the way that it was supposed to have worked out. Um, so no, I I wouldn't. Uh -uh. Good. It's a great answer. Well, mm -hmm. it has been a delight to talk with you. I, I hope we can do like a 2.0 of this. Cause like I said, I think Lisa and I each have like 30 more questions that we <laughs> wanted to get. I to. know. I just want to hang out with y'all. Hey, come on. Now that you're in, uh, Sam, in the Bay, let's do it. So, Cause you know, my goddaughter is plays basketball. Today. Well, oh, that's what I was going to say. Cameron number Wayne. 22. Cameron. He's amazing. I love it. I'm going to go to a game now that I'm going to be out there. I'm so excited. I can't Please wait. Come. To they, play South, they play South Carolina at home Ooh, this, yes. this year okay, and everything. Good. So, you yeah. tell, you tell us the go. game that you're going to go to, and I will get Lisa out there, and we will yeah. all go to a Stanford women's and come And let's come to a football game. I'll get you a jersey, and then and then we'll go to a, a, a Warriors game, and I want a jersey. That's it. I like, that I like where this we'll is go, We'll wake up and go to Mayfield Bakery and have that, like, <laughs> that like cappuccino, best thing in my, oh, I've ever had. It's like a million dollars, but it's worth every penny. <laughs> and then we'll go to a game. Are you, we'll to are you paying? Are you paying the $50 million? Dollars? Let's I'm have, I don't know. We'll have Steph, Steph pay. I'm on a budget now. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Are you kidding? Me too. So Maybe we'll oh, have the boys take good. care of us and they we'll can We'll have pay. the boys pick up the tab. I like that. Oh, you ladies are awesome. Fierce Love, a memoir of family, faith, and purpose. Go buy it. So good. Um, there's so many good stories. Sonia, thank you. This was yeah. just Thank you all for having delight. me. Thank you so much. And say hi to Mickey. And, and have a blast at Disney World. World. Yeah. <laughs> I will. I, I will. It. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Hi, Sonia. I don't even really know what to say after that interview, Lisa. She was yeah. awesome. I um, love her. I love her. She's she was, such a strong woman. She's and so deliberate and intentional. And I, I need to learn how to be more like that. So that was just incredible. I loved it. No, she's she's amazing. And I think when you think about how introspective she is and what what really stood out to me was when you read her book, she comes across as this like fiercely strong, strict, yes, uh, purposeful, intention, faith driven woman. And she is all of those things. And then in getting to meet her and talk to her even on a screen, like yeah. she's got this beautiful lightness and joy and, and sort of levity yes. about her. And I love that she said, like, I found that again. Like I realized that I'm fun and that I like to have fun <laughs> and that I'm joyful. And it just, I don't know. It, I, I'm sure that there are a lot of women out there and you go through all these different things in your life. And, and when a marriage dissolves and the way it impacts the family, but what she talked about with, it wasn't that those 30 years with Dell didn't mean anything. Right. They were for that time. Right. And, they and now beautiful. there's a new phase. And they were, yeah, and exactly. And now she's like evolved and she's in a new phase of her life and she's embracing it and loving it. And that's, that's really, really amazing to see for a lot of women out there in the same situation or similar situation. There's hope, there's light, there's, you know, joy coming yeah. out of things, even if you go through hard times. So, wow. She was in fantastic. She's amazing and just couldn't be happier for her on this new phase and chapter that she's in. Cause you can tell, I love that. She was like, yeah, I, I guess I am just doing whatever I want. And love that feels it. pretty damn good. As, <laughs> oh, all right. Well, thank you as always for listening. Please subscribe, go check out our YouTube channel. we got a ton of great content for you over there. And the last thing, a little bit of a teaser. Um, so I hear there's some new reality show involving a, a young lady that, you know, fairly well. Yes. Rumor has it. The reality show is dropping Monday night on TL something, TBS, TL something. The um, one of those, one of those T's, Culpo Sisters um, reality show is dropping Monday night at seven o'clock. We're having a big watch party here at my house. All my friends were going to come dressed as our favorite Culpo sister. 
We are like 50 year old women dressed completely inappropriate that we should not be wearing that, but we're going to, we're going to go for it. <laughs> and we're watch with bated breath. So, it, oh, I so love fun. that. So, now is Christian, yeah. is Christian going to make an appearance? He is not going to make an appearance. Okay. He's not right. in it. He didn't want to be in it. He's not, but he supports her and her endeavor and this next chapter for her. So good. It'll be well, fun. They're a I great family. To it's going to be so fun to watch. I, fun. I'm pumped. And, and you mentioned the family. Yes. Olivia's mom, Susan, mm -hmm. is going to join us on the podcast. She is our next guest. Yes. So uh, she is she'll give us, I'm sure, some some deets behind the scenes. Oh, and I love her. I can't yes. wait. She's amazing. She's I, amazing. I've gotten to know her just a little bit. And as always, when there's a when when you love a kid, you usually just go have to go meet their parents. And you're like, oh, yeah. I get it. Sense. That's why. I yeah, it. exactly. I no, she's, she's, and she's different than I think most people will think she is, too. In yeah. a good way. In a good way. It's going to be great. So last yeah. thing, I really am going to manifest this happening since we're now uh, two for two on the last two podcasts mm -hmm. of manifesting things to come true. You and me and Sonia Curry are going to go to a Stanford women's basketball game. Yes. And we're going to go to Mayfield Bakery, have a croissant. And a cappuccino, and then we're gonna. We go have to, to say it like that. A croissant. croissant. God bless me. And then we're gonna go to a Stanford basketball game. It's gonna be so fun. It's gonna be amazing. And then maybe one of your single sons will uh, end up marrying Cameron Brink. That's what the other thing I would say because Cam Brink, game, game on. She's freaking awesome. So good at basketball. Fabulous young lady. And Great. if we're just gonna get, keep, if if we're here to create you know, excellent athletes and human beings. I think <laughs> we're combining. Right. Yeah. We just, that's the key. That's all I care. Is she, I just want her to like come and take care of me and cook for me and like, yeah. you know, just like cater to me and just, you know, that's what I want. That's what I, well, you're hopefully you're, you're going to get four daughter-in-laws. Yeah. I mean, you, you're, that's yeah. pretty, I hadn't really thought about that. You didn't get any daughters nope. the first go around, but now you get four daughter-in-laws yeah. and you didn't have to raise them. You just get to that's true. I get, I have them the wait on you. Yeah. Exactly. After the hard time, you know, the teenage years, I get them after they've, yeah. and they're awesome. Kind of so. You kind of did this right. I think. Did I? We'll yeah, see. we'll see. In Stay retrospect, tuned. so far so good. But we'll see. Moving forward. Awesome, Lisa, you're the best. We'll do it again next week. Peace. Love you. Bye, everybody. Bye.